Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering Statistics. We're going to work another problem with confidence intervals for population proportions. And it goes like this. 190 adults are surveyed and 71 say that they eat out regularly. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of adults who eat out regularly. So it's a very classic problem. We're trying to study the population of North America, let's say, and we're trying to figure out what percentage of those people, or estimate what percentage of those people, eat out regularly. What does that exactly mean? Who knows? But it's, it's kind of fuzzy now, but basically what, you know, uh, what percentage of them at, go out to eat very often. Okay? We can't ask everybody, so what we do is we sample 190 adults and we get an answer. 71% say they eat out regularly. So from that information, we want to calculate a confidence interval that we think is going to contain the proportion of people in the country that eat out regularly. And we want to do it at a 95%, so a pretty high confidence level. All right, so the first thing you do is you write down what you know. Okay, so what we write down is we say, well, we know how many people we asked, and we know how many people said that they eat out regularly. So from that, we can calculate p hat. Notice there's a hat. This means this is the sample proportion of people who eat out regularly. And that's going to be 71, whoops, not 17, 71 over 190. This is a fraction uh, that you can just divide in your calculator. And when you do that, you're going to get 0 0.37. Now, when we do our calculations, we want to use 0 0.37. But just so you know, you can think about this as 3 point, um, as, I'm sorry, not 3 point, 37 percent. Okay, which is a fair amount of people because we take this, we multiply by 100, it shifts the decimal point two spots to 37%. So from our sampling, it's telling us that the proportion of people who eat out regularly is around 37%, but we know that that's not representative of the whole country. We know there's got to be some fuzziness associated with that. That's where the confidence interval comes in. We got to find that margin of error that will surround either side of our point estimate that we just calculated. So what we need to do is go down that road. Now, at a 95% confidence level, what is the critical value of z? Because we need that to calculate the margin of error. So we go back over here, and it's just to remind you what it really means is 95% means that the area between these two values of z, symmetrical, is 0.95. You could go look in the chart in the back of the book, figure out what area would lie between here, 0.95, and you would get a plus or minus value of z that would yield you an area. That's what the level of confidence is. But since it's a normal distribution, and since we use the same percentages over and over again, we've already tallied for you this information. So for a 0.95 level of confidence, which is 95%, the critical value of z is 1.96. That means this value is 1.96, this value is negative 1.96. So 